So now Pilate is, now Pilate doesn't know what to do. He says, okay, well, you can have Barabbas. Well, what do I do with Jesus, right? Look, look what it says in 12 and 14. Pilate answered and said to them again, what then do you want me to do with him who's called the king of the Jews? What do you want me to do with this guy? So they cried out again, crucify him. And Pilate said to them, why, what evil has he done? But they cried out all the more, crucify him. What do you want me to do with Jesus? Nail him on a cross till he dies. So here we see a very important theological thing. Jesus, we talked about this like four weeks ago, but we'll do it again. Jesus is the substitute. This is a picture of substitutionary atonement. Jesus is an even trade for Barabbas. Jesus steps in to the place. I don't know if this is right or not, but J. Vernon McGee thinks that Jesus took the actual cross of Barabbas. I don't know if that's true. I wouldn't put it past God to be that perfect, though. But what we see is that Jesus literally, physically steps in into the place of Barabbas. Barabbas is in chains, condemned and hopeless. He is without ability to save himself or to give himself life. Barabbas is physically removed, set free. Jesus is physically implanted with the prisoners. He has now taken the wrath and the sin that Barabbas has done and has been placed upon him. Jesus is in his place. Do we understand the purpose of that? So for the rebel... Jesus is the substitute. For the chained and the hopeless, Jesus is the substitute. For the murderer, Jesus is the substitute. For the condemned, Jesus is the substitute. Why does that matter? Romans chapter 5, verses 6 through 10 says this. For when we, not Barabbas, for when we were still without strength, chained, in due time Christ died for the ungodly, the sinner. For scarcely for a righteous man will one die, yet perhaps for a good man someone would even dare to die. But God demonstrates his own love toward us that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Much more than having now been justified by his blood, we shall be saved from the wrath through him. For if when we were enemies or rebels, we were reconciled to God through the death of his son, much more having been reconciled. We shall be saved by his life. You see, it's important that Barabbas was an enemy of Rome. It's important that we know that Barabbas was a sinner. It's important that we know that he was condemned to wrath. It's important that we know that he was helpless on his own. Because when he's those things, we know that we are those things, and we know that Christ has answered the call on everyone. That Christ has been our substitute. Aren't you glad that in that moment and that day, Jesus wasn't just the replacement for Barabbas, but he was the replacement for you? He was the replacement for me? You say, well, I, I've never been as bad as Barabbas was. Oh, yes, you have. Oh, yes, I have. I've had hatred in my heart for enough people to murder them ten times over. I've rebelled against my master more times than I could ever even imagine. I'm as helpless and chained in my own sin with my own strength as anybody has ever been. It's only through Jesus that any of us escape the wrath have the chains broken and are given life and freedom. 